Welcome in to the DNBR Avalanche pregame show presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code DNBR when you sign up to get amazing odds boost every single day. Bruto, AJ, and Megan coming at you pregame for the Avs versus Montreal. Montreal's bad. Okay, we can end the pregame show. Thank you for watching. No, just kidding. Um, Glad we got three of us on here for that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, look, Avs are going for is it, this will be their 14th straight at home if they win it, I believe. 16. Is it 16? Is it that many? I, I've lost count at this point. <laughs> um, either way, a very large number of wins at home for Colorado and uh, against a team that on paper they definitely should beat, especially given... Montreal, who who even is their starting goaltender at this point? Uh, I think it's Caden Primo. It is. Okay. Primo. Who, like, once upon a yeah. lifetime <laughs> was a decent goaltending prospect and then not like, all disappeared those years yeah. in between <laughs> happened and it's not great. Well, they're going to need him to be a good backup, so. Everybody they're going to need him to be a starter now because yeah. they don't have yeah. any goalies. Montembeau is playing well, but they need to rest him because he's going to be their starter now. Don't envy that position at all. Yeah, I thought we had goaltending issues. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't believe we're looking at Arizona with Scott Wedgwood and Corel Vegmelka, the Melka, the Mel and, yeah. and feeling like, yeah, that's a better situation than Samuel Montebo and Caden <laughs> Primo. Good God, it can always get worse. All right, that's Dude. that's the lesson we're we're learning here. Um. Look, on the ad side of things... Oh, yeah. No, we need to start here. Megan's on the show. What's your okay. bad food take? Oh, um, <laughs> See, this is hard to do on the you, spot. No one can ever do this on the spot. It's true. All it's of because, bad because we probably <laughs> think it's good, and we don't realize till we talk to other people that it's a yeah. weird food take. <clears throat> All of my bad food takes were an accident. <laughs> it's true. My dad introduced me to ketchup on French toast, and I didn't hate it. So I think that could be a, a weird food. That's take. weird. That's <laughs> definitely weird. I don't know. Rudo and I are of the opinion that ketchup on pretty much anything yeah, is. Yeah, it's, it's the worst kind of one by okay. like a lot. The closest that I get to ketchup at this point is mayo chup. I do like a combo. <laughs> yeah, for mayo chup's good. I can burgers. live with mayo chup. I will also mix uh, ketchup and mustard on a like a hot dog. Okay, I was going to ask for hot dog. It. Are you mustard only? Oh no, I'm never mustard only on okay. anything. Really? I don't I, I like don't ketchup. like mustard enough for that. I can I'm mustard only dogs all the time. I believe that. <laughs> so many things so many things where I think that's disgusting. Rudo's like, I like that. Pickles. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like pickles? I love pickles. Okay. I think they're great. You don't I can't like pickles? I can't okay. be around them. That's right. Okay. I will oh, I just okay. just thinking about Look, them will make me sick. AJ's <laughs> allowed to have a food take again when he tries salsa. Okay. <laughs> um, that's yeah. where I'm at at this point. I guess I guess maybe that's my bad food <laughs> take is that I've never tried salsa. What? What about pico? Uh, not a fan. Interesting. I t t okay. Get it off of everything. Okay. Take it off. I Thank you for like the it. super chat, by the way, vaguely sober. Much appreciated. Uh, nothing wrong with mayo chup on a burrito if it's the right type of burrito. A little mayo chup on a breakfast burrito? Mm, now you're talking. Uh, in any case, this is a team the app should beat. Yeah, I mean they're at the bottom. They're at the bottom of the NHL standings. Mm -hmm. uh, a team that was in the Stanley Cup Finals is actually out tanking the Arizona Coyotes. Impressive. They didn't set out to do it, but with no Carey Price and Shea Weber coming in, it was going to be a tough road. And then now you're down. No Jake Allen. <laughs> no Jeff Petrie. It, it, you're just a, it's just a bad it, team at this point. It's one of those things where it's like <coughs> you play the first 20, 25 games of the season and then Montreal, Montreal goes, well, we're in this tanking room now. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, you get nearly halfway through the year and you're like, well, we have a better shot at Shane Wright than we do the postseason. Yep. Why would we try and lie to ourselves about this? But they are, they also have experienced a complete organizational overhaul on the fly. Uh, as they've That's gotten true. rid of their, you know, you. They're not even done with their search for front office people yet. So. Right. Like they just hired a new GM last week. Yep. How weird is it that there have been four GM searches going on mid season? 
Like, teams don't want to give interviews for their guys. Like, the teams have schedules. Like, hey, go and do your job. <laughs> We're not giving our front office people time to go interview for other jobs. This is what you do. This is what July is for. <laughs> like, it's, it's just such a strange year. And nothing, like, I would be curious to know if a team that has ever appeared in a, in a cup finals has finished in last place the very next season. Boy, I imagine that like there's there's worst to first and first to worst and things like that, but not like that. In the expansion era, I, it would be really tough for that to happen. I would think. How are you that bad? But I'm That's not cool. sure. Yeah, it's. I'd, I asked Petey during our watch along, which what? yeah, which is a bigger failure: Montreal following a Cup Finals by finishing last in the NHL, or Arizona. Getting out purposely yeah. tanking the crap out of this season and not finishing in last place. And he said Arizona, and I still agree with him. But this is still a nightmare for Montreal. It's not good. I there's not a there's not a whole lot of positives you can take out of this year for Montreal. Which which kind of brings me to my first topic here. We've talked a little bit on the last couple of shows about this next set of games for the Avs, starting with Montreal tonight. It's against a number of weaker opponents for the yeah. most part. So my question is, how do you avoid the emotional lapse game? How do you keep it sharp enough to get the wins that you're supposed to? Well, I think it's going to be tough. Uh, Bo having Boston in the middle of all that should yeah. help. But I do think it's it's a, just emotionally from a human perspective... It's harder to get up for these games. But it's also like a hungry and motivated team is going to look at that schedule and say, these are all points we should be getting. We have every reason in the world. If we play the way that we want to play, the way that we should play, these are our points for the taking. They are this close to running away with their division right now. Like, they've been so good leading up to this stretch that... They put themselves in a position where they could be 10, 15 points ahead of one of the wild card teams two weeks from now. Yeah. If things go a certain way. Like they they are already, because of the games in hand, because of where they already sit, they're already on the precipice of being like, This is our division and we're just gonna take it. Like this is this is a stretch where you can absolutely hammer that. Megan, so that's it. That's that's how I would say you stay focused. Uh, how do you want to see the Avs win these games? Because on the one hand, there's a case for the Avs are the better team. You want to see their stars dominate a team like this. But also, there's an opportunity to use a team like Minnesota as a get-right team for a Montreal. Tyson Jose. Yes. Did, uh, did I say Minnesota? Yeah. Sorry. Just, just can't, one, can't, one brain. can't help but reference them with the bottom feeders. I, I don't know yeah. what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Subconscious disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> Get it where I can. But yeah, uh, do you want to see the high end show out? Do you want to see the low end kind of start to figure out some of the things? I'd like to see the low end start to figure out things. Um, I think this would be a time for someone like Bednar to deploy the third and fourth line a little bit more and distribute the time on ice a little more evenly among the lines because that top line has been putting in extra shifts and showing up in a big way. But I look at someone like Mihail Maltsev, who has a call-up opportunity until Helm is better. And this is somebody who is going to enter these games highly motivated to impress. And I think that if the third and fourth line are given a little bit more time on ice, um, they're going to be the people you could look to, the Tyson Joes, the JT Comfort, to do better and hopefully show up in a big way in these games. All right. I tend to agree. It, it, I think you make a great point, especially... You know, the way the Avs have been running their lineup, you're talking about them running a fourth line that's getting sometimes five minutes or less yeah. a night. Curtis McDermott on the back end. You have a defenseman playing sometimes three minutes a night. And the, the counter side of that, as we see Devontae's playing 29 minutes a night, right. stuff like that. It, 
it's not like we're heading into the playoffs or anything, but load, man- load management does matter, right? You don't right. want to burn out your best players this early it's in the year. Definitely less of an issue when you have the big break that they've got coming up in two That's weeks. That's true. true. Uh, but, like, you also, like... You don't want to like throw like a thirty-two minute Devon Taves night against the Canadiens, right? No, and watch him like right. break an ankle or something, and then you're like, "Wow, sure glad we did that." Right? <laughs> you know, like you don't, you don't, uh, you you can't be like it's an important thing to keep in mind. Yeah, but the most like you still have to go out there and win games for sure. You know what what you want like the ideal formula is, is what they did in Arizona. Where they, they got up. Them. They got yeah. up two. You know, they got up th- really three nothing, and then it was four nothing going into the third, and then they could really just like re reshuffle how their their line and minute distribution went in a way that allowed them to just be like, hey, we don't. Everybody plays seventeen minutes tonight. You know, we don't need a twenty seven minute guy. Like that's that's the ideal formula for t- for game. The really the tonight, the Chicago games, Buffalo, like. The upcoming slate is get a score first. Don't don't let the underdogs start to feel good about themselves. You know, get out on them, build a lead, put them down early, and then cruise control. Like don't don't turtle, but just kick it into do what they did in the third period against the Kings. Right. Just very professional and mature approach. Just go and don't don't give them anything, and. Get out of there with a dub. Yeah. I, that sounds good to me. <laughs> Saying it's so easy, right? <laughs> right. It's such a hockey cliche. Start the game on time. But I think that's going to actually be really important for the Avalanche not to underestimate a team that has actually not had two terrible last two games um, and is going to look at the Avalanche and they're going to be ready. The Canadians, you, hopefully. You don't want to be the team that gets them rolling, right? Toronto yeah. was that for Arizona <laughs> a, a, a week a week or two ago. Yeah. Now Arizona's won like five of their last ten, which is great for them uh, on their season. It's so not, but well, <laughs> it's great for the people that want them to win. Yeah, it's great for the players. <laughs> uh, so you you do you never want to be that team. And well, and you really like you've got like a like a legendary home winning streak going right now. Yeah. You know, it to be stopped by a bottom feeder right, like Montreal you yeah. like you want if somebody's gonna come in and beat you it needs to be a Boston right like it needs to be somebody that you take seriously and not because you got complacent and we're like well and like I'm a little and I'm always this guy but I'm a little nervous yeah. coming off of the week that they just had yeah. they just had that 7 and 11 stretch and the quality of opponent in the last week Went way up. Yep. They go from an Arizona back to back to Minnesota, Anaheim, LA. So like they had to play they had to, and they played three really different hockey games and they got great goaltending. I want to see the great goal goaltending for sure continue. But I I I, I wanna see the I wanna see the, the skaters pick it up just a touch. Like Get you the really, job done, yeah. Yeah, you wanna see one of those like 21 to 9 Corsi periods, you know, where they just they just kind of like drop the bomb on a team and you're like, yeah, all right, smoke these guys, you know, and they walk out of there two or three nothing and you're just feeling good where you're like, yeah, okay, because then this has like and I'm going to continue to talk about it until it happens, but it's got that letdown potential. Yep. And I think part of this conversation is, like you said, you are building something here where there's not a team in the league that's going to want to play the Avalanche inside of Ball Arena. Oh, yeah. Well, you look at their home record right now, and you look at their record in the Western Conference, right now they're the top seed. Right now, to get to the Stanley Cup Finals, it's going through Denver. Yep. And they continue to play like this at home. Nobody wants that smoke. (laughs) Altitude or not. (laughs) Paul Bissonnette would like a word. The uh, <laughs> we're gonna start calling it the brown cloud advantage. Gross, <laughs> gross. 
Uh, thank you for the super chat, that by will the way. That not be Rio. our next shirt. No, absolutely not. We, we, we already talked about this one for sure, but they should just do a GM speed dating at All Star Weekend <laughs> and televise it. That Honestly, put it on the ledger. I'm here for it. All right. Honestly, GM speed dating would be awesome. Sounds effective. It would be like, okay, you've got five minutes to pitch me on how to fix this franchise. Go. Because normally those, those, those meetings take like four hours. All right. You got five minutes to try and boil down how you're going to fix the, the franchise. The GM combine is what we need. All right. Oh, <laughs> yes. Where they get to they get to take like the IQ test. Yeah. They have to take like analytics aptitude tests. They have a five minute event where they're fielding phone calls from four different phones. Oh my God! Like the old NHL, yeah, the exactly. NHL games. All the, and if you make a mistake, they take away yeah. one of your phones. <laughs> They have to field a hypothetical call from Joe Sackick just to see how they handle <laughs> just it. Just yet. Oh, Colorado's calling? I okay. hang up Don't the answer. phone. <laughs> Figure out who they want and give that guy an extension. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take whoever they're after and move him into the do not trade pile. <laughs> All right. Now Eugene Melnick's on the phone. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> you put him on speaker and everybody get ready to giggle a lot. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, you can tell. Uh, Montreal, not a great place based on this pregame show and, and where we're going with it. But with a couple more wins at home, what the Avs are doing starts to turn into something that transcends just a great winning streak, just a great season. You're, you're talking about pushing towards record-setting stuff for this yeah. hockey team. Is, sure. <laughs> Do you think that's something that's that's on this team's mind at all? Do you think they're aware of, of numbers like that? That face says no, I think. <laughs> I don't know that they're thinking about it in that way, but I think there is probably a sense that this season is different from others before and that they are breaking records, even if, even if they don't have a feel for what that is exactly. I think there's probably a sense that there is something different about this team. I, I think like that the there's... Answer. There's a couple of guys who were on that garbage 13-14 team that had no business breaking as many records as it did. And those couple of guys are like, so this is the real yeah, one. Let's this set is, the record straight with this, this is, one. Yeah. yeah, like this is the actual best team. And it's interesting because we talked about coming into this year. It may not be that year. It may be more of a transition year. They don't seem to feel that way. Uh, they aren't treating the league that way. Clearly. <laughs> I don't think that they're sitting around worrying about records or thinking too much about it. But you know that they're cognizant of it. Oh, yep. we haven't lost at home in two months. You know, like, yeah, they're aware of that. You, you just know, like, oh, hey, how did you guys feel when you guys lost to Columbus? Didn't feel very good? All right, well, let's stop doing it. What if it, we then. never did that again? <laughs> And they have found their way through a lot of different types of games, a lot of different situations. For sure. Like, yes. It's been interesting. Uh, this one, you don't want this one to be all that interesting. You would love a repeat of what they did in Montreal. Just the boring. Yep. Uh, <laughs> they get out in front and they just outplay the other team and they just build it up and build it up. Walk out with a 4-1 win and you're golden. You don't even think about it ever yep. again. All right. Let's get to Blaze's bets really quick here. Couldn't be with us on the show today. But uh, he's still going to make you some money tonight. So we got he likes he likes the all star. Nazi all star right here. Kadri plus 165 for an anytime goal score. That's pretty good numbers. It's pretty good plus right there. He continues to ride the Kale McCarr is free money train with uh, the, the half a power play point positive. And the Miko with 1K. He's just part of the Miko today. He's and not full Miko. Look, every time he has a game where he's cruising around and making you super frustrated, you just drop a K from his exactly. name. Exactly. Right? <laughs> he's Miko. If, if he messes up again, it'll be Mio. <laughs> That's right. And we'll just then then you just get down to nothing at that point. <laughs> then he's you, he gets all the way down to M, and then you build it back up as Moose. All right. Sure. When he starts going again. Oh, I see so. the meme that you're working on in your uh -huh, head. The, uh -huh. the, the, Got it. Yep. I got it. <laughs> in there. So head on over to DraftKings. Put your bets in. Look, against a team like Montreal, it's always recommended to just kind of spray a little bit of everything on the ab side of stuff. Yeah. So 
you can't go wrong with with it with most Avs bets tonight unless they blow it and then AJ will be like I told you I told you it didn't feel good about this one but I actually did, I I didn't feel good about either California game and I didn't know how to feel about Minnesota I don't have any feeling whatsoever about today's game mostly because I'm not supposed to be here true uh, and I wasn't planning on it <laughs> and this is just how my life is going right now so. <laughs> All right. I'll well, be free in 24 hours. Thank God. Hopefully Montreal feels the same way during this <laughs> hockey game and not the abs. Yeah. <laughs> this is just how their life is going right now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, Turbo Dunk 2.0, right? 2.0, baby. Let's get on it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and wrap this thing up. We're well inside 10 minutes to puck drop. So thank you, everyone, for hanging <sighs> out pregame. You know you'll find us back here post game too, so be sure to tune in to that. Other than that, Enjoy the game, and we will talk to you afterward.